because things are going to get tough. Maybe you're in a tough spot right now. Maybe you're not sure how to cope. And maybe everyone around you is telling you just think positive. And while that can work for some people and that can work for some situations, just thinking positive is not always the best. Hey guys, since you're joining me today, this is episode number 91 of the Mom Talks with Krista podcast. I hope you're having a great week so far. I've got my good vibes good vibe shirt on today. So I think that's bringing some good vibes, good energy, and I hope it brings it out to you guys as well. Today, we've got another really great episode for you. But first, I want to talk about some community updates, highlights, whatever we're going to call them now. So next month is August, which, well, it is my birthday month, but I don't think that's what you're coming here to find out about. Next month is World Breastfeeding Month. And to be more specific, World Breastfeeding Week is August 1st through 7th. So it is a big month for Mommy Knows Best. We always like to do some kind of fun giveaways, um, some educational posts, and so much more around World Breastfeeding Week. And so we are going to be doing a big giveaway. I can't tell you what but be sure to check out our posts and most importantly, make sure you're on our email list. So you get the updates because, um, people on our list will get the email first before the week starts even. So you can click the link in the show notes and you can sign up for our email list and you'll get notified about this amazing giveaway we're doing. We always do something different every year, but it's always a lot of fun to put together. Last week on the podcast, we had Kariana Gibb and she's a pediatric sleep consultant. We talked all about the sleep myths for babies and toddlers, and there are a lot of them. So if you are kind of in that space where you're getting a lot of information, we'll call it that from a lot of different people, different spots, check this out. It's so easy to get caught up in myths on the internet people around us. We don't always know it's true. So it's good hearing from the source. That's why we do this show. So you can actually hear from experts, you know, what, what's true and what works. So check that out. If you have questions about sleep or sleep myths next week, I have Crystal Heitzma, who is a parenting coach. And I just really, really enjoyed talking with her. She just, man, We just had a really great conversation, first of all, but she really just talks about how to look inward and heal ourselves and help break the cycle. You know, every kind of generation has its own things that we kind of learn from, you know, maybe our parents and things that we don't want to do anymore. So she kind of teaches us to look inward and see how we can kind of evaluate our own emotions, evaluate what's going on so that we kind of stop them where it starts. And so we don't bring them to our kids, certain things that um, might bother us. So check that out. That's next week. And then today I have a very special episode for you guys. And if you're watching this on YouTube, it's going to be different than normal because we're not going to have video. I know it's going to sound a little weird, but basically what we're going to do is share a clip from a peanut pod that I did previously. And While I did record, it's more of like me, like talking on a phone. So it's not really anything to see, I guess. And I just thought this was a really important one to share. It's called how to cope when times get tough. And so it was a peanut pod and we just had a really great discussion. Of course, this is only short segments from it where I am talking. This is not anyone talking or sharing their experience because as a, as a peanut pod, it's a very interactive kind of thing. So people are able to respond to me, able to ask questions, share with the group, get support. That is all cropped out. This is more just the beginning of when I'm talking. I just want to give you guys a little sneak peek into what the peanut pod is. Cause a lot of people have questions as to what it is. And so I just kind of wanted to share share it so you can kind of experience it and you know all that good stuff and this one was one of my favorite ones there's sometimes where we just have really good topics and it just it's like it needed to happen like this was like a really good topic because as much as I try to stay positive in self-love self-improvement type topics we also need to know how to cope when things are tough. We need to cope or know what to do when things are not the way that we perceive them or the not, not the way that we want them to be. 
And so I think it was really a really good topic to have because, you know, things aren't always easy. Things can be hard many of the times, many times. And so this was a really good conversation. And I could tell by a lot of the women responding, interacting in it, how um, powerful this was. And so I just hope you guys get a little something from it too. So I'm going to play a little clip from it now and then meet me at the end for a little outro and some more uh, community notes. All right, here it is. Enjoy. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and get started. And then as you know, time goes on with this, feel free to, I always like to open these up for discussion. So if anytime you have something you would like to say or have a question, please feel free to do so. So I want to start off with like a little, just a little introduction. My name is Krista and I'm the marketing director for Mommy Knows Best. Mommy Knows Best is a brand dedicated to empowering all moms through their journey, through support, tips, and products to help boost milk supply. And so with Mommy Knows Best, we have a show called Mom Talks with Krista, where I interview all kinds of women in the field related to pregnancy, labor and delivery, postpartum health, and so much more. And then we have everyday moms on there sharing stories of struggle, triumph, and the unexpected. And what we really try to do with this community is to create a safe space where women can feel safe, heard, and connected. And if you like what you hear today, I hope you'll join me on another pod. I do these twice a month now, the first and third Thursday at 1 p.m. Central. You can also join my peanut pod group or peanut group, I guess you call it. And that's called Mom Talks with Krista, the same as the podcast. And so you can join me there. I also share updates in the group. We have little chats. It's just a great way to stay connected. So I definitely don't want you to feel like this is a one-time thing. If you guys want to stay connected. We have so many different ways. You can also connect with me on Instagram. I have mommy knows best. And then my personal is Hey Soul Krista. And of course, if you like what you hear today, send me a message. I'll send you any links and keep the conversation going. I want you to know that you have a community here and you have my support. So today we're going to talk about how to cope when things get tough. I like to, all my different topics I do are about self-improvement in one way or another. And I And I'm hesitant with using the term self-improvement because a lot of people hear that means I'm not enough right now. And that's not the case. You are enough as you are. I cannot say that enough that you do not have to change for anybody, right? Self-improvement is more if something feels off with you or if there's something you want to enhance about yourself or there's something that you have brushed away because maybe it was told, you know, it's, it's inconvenient to other people or it's in the way that those are the kinds of things we want to bring out with self-improvement. So self-improvement's not change, but it's enhancing what we have or what we had at one point in bringing us to our more authentic self. So with these different kinds of topics, I like to switch them up is tangible, Um, and things that we can leave with good tips. But today I want to start with how to cope when things get tough, because a lot of times you hear, you know, and things in these, you know, kinds of talks, it's like, oh, well, focus on the positive. Think of, think of how bad other people have it. And we're taught to ignore how we are actually feeling about something because other people might have it worse. And that teaches us to dismiss how we feel, right? And so I want to do the opposite today. Because things are going to get tough. Maybe you're in a tough spot right now. Maybe you're not sure how to cope. And maybe everyone around you is telling you just think positive. And while that can work for some people and that can work for some situations, just thinking positive is not always the best because it's belittling how we feel and it's belittling our own experience and our own journey. So it's pretty easy, you know, when you're in a good mood or when things are going great to make a plan to focus on self-love or to focus on other things that make us happy and to try new things, right? If we're like, oh, I want to do a new morning routine. It's so easy. I shouldn't say easy, easier to plan these things out when we are feeling optimistic about the world, when things are going well for us, when we're in a good mood, it's so much easier. But when things are bad or we're going through a lot, our minds are foggy our energy is depleted and we don't want to do anything. So getting us to take on a new task or 
to start a new routine or do something to improve ourselves is not going to be the easiest, right? So how can we cope when things are tough? First and foremost, I want to remind you guys that everyone copes differently. So it's important that we're not only careful with how we speak to other people in times of coping, but how we speak to ourselves. And if you are someone that grew up where you had to quickly get over sadness, anger, disappointment to move on to the next emotion, you might naturally be belittling your emotion, right? Um, Sometimes I catch myself like, and I'm upset about something or something happened. I'm like, I got to just move on from this. And I find that I don't truly absorb or understand how I feel because I don't quote unquote have time for it. Right. How many of us are guilty of not, or of telling ourselves we don't have time to feel a certain way because if we stop, then no one else around us will keep going because we're, you know, we're the caretakers. So I want you to remember that everyone copes differently in those moments and really acknowledge and ask yourself, how do I typically cope when things are tough? So if you're in a tough spot right now, what's your defense mechanism? Is it to get angry at people around you? Is it to shield people from you? Is it to pretend like things aren't happening? Is it to ignore what's going on? We all have different ways of coping and different ways of acting. Maybe we get really, you know, emotional. Maybe we get closed off. There's so many different ways. So first ask yourself what you're doing right now. Not in an ideal world, not what you hope to cope like. What are you doing right now? And then ask yourself, is it working? When things get tough, the way I act or how I cope, is it working? And by, is it working? Is it working for you? Not, is it working for your friend next door? Not, is it working for your parents? Not, is it working for, um, you know, your spouse? But right now, is it working for you? Because I think what happens is when we go through something tough, we try to cope for those around us before coping for ourselves. We want to get mo- through it or move around it without actually absorbing and understanding what we're feeling. We want to look tough on the outside to everyone around us. So we quickly gather up our emotions and run. We run from it. And what does that do? When we hide away sadness or disappointment or hurt or um, stress, it can turn into anger. So they say anger is a secondary emotion. It's a secondary emotion because we're feeling unheard. We're feeling like no one is responding to us. When at the base of it all, we're not responding to ourselves. So it's important to ask yourself these questions of how can I cope or how am I coping right now? Okay, so now let's kind of go into the steps. And if you're just joining me, I just want to say welcome to those just joining. A little introduction. My name's Krista, and I am the marketing director for Mommy Knows Best. And Mommy Knows Best is a brand dedicated to empowering all moms through support, tips, and products that help boost milk supply. And we also have a show called Mom Talks with Krista. We have new episodes every Wednesday. It's a podcast, and it's on YouTube. So If you guys like what you hear today, we have very similar conversations there. Message me after this, we can connect and I'll send you, you know, any of the links to connect to it, but there's lots of ways to connect. I don't want you guys to think this is a one-off thing. I would love to keep connecting and keep this community. I also have a community on here called mom talks with Krista, and I'd love to see you in it. We share random questions, support, um, and then I will share the updated uh, peanut pods as well. And I said this in the beginning as well, but um, if you missed it, I always open these up to discussion um, and real-time help. So if you have a question or a situation or something you want to bring to the group's attention, of course, you are welcome to do so. Okay, so now we have already kind of going back to how to cope in tough situations, going back to asking ourselves, how do we currently cope? 
And maybe your answer is, I don't cope. Maybe something happens and you're like, well, I'm used to disappointment, so that's that. I'm just gonna pretend like it doesn't happen and carry on with my life. But then that thing is going to fester. And maybe it doesn't happen in one giant explosion, but maybe it happens more as maybe irritability, uh, maybe being short with other people around you, maybe having a hard time connecting with other people around you because you're being, you're afraid of being let down again. So a lot of this is internal work, asking ourselves what we're doing, if it's working or not. Okay. So now into how we can cope. And if you missed it before, it's a reminder that everyone copes differently. So just because I'm saying something today does not mean it's textbook or anything like that. I want you to take bits and pieces of what works best for you, or maybe the complete opposite works for you. But this is just kind of what I've seen through my work, through talking with women and all that good stuff. So first things first, allow yourself time to feel. I think many of us, especially the moms here in this group, are have been known to push their own feelings aside in order to benefit and help those around them. So when something happens, we brush it away and say, that's not important right now. I have this other thing I have to tackle instead. But allowing yourself to feel in those moments and checking in with yourself is going to be more powerful than you think. And maybe right away, you won't know how you feel. Maybe right away, you're just like, I don't feel right. I don't know if I'm sad or I'm excited or I'm overwhelmed. But even just checking in and asking yourself, how do I feel about this news? I know something's different. I know something's going to change. Am I okay with it? And maybe at that moment, you kind of just, all right, I checked in with myself. I don't really know how I feel, but something feels off. Then you check in with yourself later in the night. How do I feel about this? Because it's still in my head. It's still alerting me. Because if you're constantly thinking about something, it's telling you like it's either bothering you or maybe it's excitement. And sometimes we don't know how to differentiate our emotions, our feelings. So it's just allowing ourselves to check in instead of sweeping things under the rug. Because many times we rush through negative or bad emotions so we can hurry back into the good but it doesn't really work. This is when we sweep our feelings under the rug. And if you really visualize it, like visualize maybe your couch is over a rug or something. Let's visualize this. Every time something happens, you're going to sweep literally under that rug. Oh, something else happened. Okay, I'm going to sweep more under the rug. Oh, another, another annoyance or another horrible thing just happened. I'm going to sweep it under the rug. And meanwhile, you're telling yourself you're fine. You're carrying on, but there's this big lump under your rug. Eventually, the rug is not going to be able to cover it all. Eventually, you're going to, if we want to keep playing into the analogies, if you have friends come over, they're going to see something's off. They're going to see that lump in the rug and say, huh, Krista's not quite herself. Something, something's off right here. But then maybe when they say it, if someone comes in and says something about it, I'm going to say, be defensive. I'm going to maybe have anger towards them. Because we're going to be holding this in and we're going to have this like festering pain 
And what I kind of talked about earlier is there's, I understand there's those times you can't exactly stop your day and you can't exactly cry wherever you are. There's certain situations for sure. So if that's the case, if that's the case, you have to plan a time, which is going to sound kind of funny, right? Especially those of us that are tend to be more emotional, planning a time where you can be fully in your feelings is so powerful, especially if you're one of those that are constantly pushing things under the rug. So back to the metaphor. Okay, maybe at first you're going to put a little bit, you're going to sleep a little bit under that rug. Then you'll be like, okay, tonight though, I'm going to get that dirt from under the rug. I'm going to sweep it up in the dustpan and I'm going to take it to the garbage. So in that moment, you're going to check in with yourself. Um, and it's going to be different for everyone. Remember, we all have different lives. We have different ways of coping. So say you're at work and you get really bad news and you're in front of a customer. So you can't exactly deal with it right then, but you're going to say, okay, I'm going to allow myself, maybe it's on the drive home from work to get your baby from daycare. Or maybe it's once you get home and your babies go down to lay, to go on a nap. Or maybe it's in the morning when your partner um, wakes up the baby, then you can kind of check in with yourself. So kind of think about what would work best for you. Get those couple of minutes, check in. And allow yourself to really be present in that moment. We really underestimate the power of checking in with ourselves. We think it sounds silly at first. because It's like, check in with myself. I am myself, right? But how many times are we kind of like, someone asks us how we're doing and we're like, ah, fine. Then later we're like, "Uh, I don't know, am I fine? It's very common. But until we check in with ourselves, we don't always know. Or you could appear happy on the outside, but really on the inside, we're festering or we're upset. Okay, so the first part is allow yourself time to heal. Sorry, allow yourself time to feel and heal, but we're going to start with feel. Allow yourself that time. The second thing you're going to need to do is ask yourself what you need in this moment. So let's say you just got some really tough news. And this is your moment to feel it out. And you're really upset. You're crying. You are in your feels. You're in your emotions. Ask yourself, what do I need in this moment? So maybe it's something like you lost your job. Okay, so needing in this moment. I think we're so quick, again, with like rushing through emotions that we're like, I need a new job. I need a new job right now. I need it. Of course, yes. Yes. That, that would be the end goal. But right now in this minute, what do you need? Do you need to be alone? Do you need to ask for help? Do you need to talk to someone? Do you just need a friend? Do you need some support? So we allow ourselves time to feel and we ask ourselves what we need. How many times has a friend offered to help you with something? And they say, oh, how can I help? And you go, uh, I don't know. It's because we don't ask ourselves, what do we need? We all have those people in our life that, that are so great about offering help and like, yeah, whatever you need, like I can help you. I can come over or whatever. And we don't know how to accept help. We don't know what we can have them help with. And I have this theory, I mean, obviously we're all different, but I have a theory that a lot of times when we don't know what we need, we just want to be heard. I'm going to say that again. A lot of times when we don't know what we need, we just need to be heard. Because if you think about like your daily to-do list, all the things you have to do, it's great. Yes, when other people help us with that to-do list. A lot of this stuff we can probably do. Maybe like taking a few things off would be great, having some help. But it's that fact that we run on autopilot and no one is checking in. We don't check in with ourselves and no one checks in with us. So we're just going, 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 going. And so we just want to connect with someone. 
We want to feel heard. We want to feel appreciated. So ask yourself, what do I need in this moment? I know like if I'm having a bad day or something and I'll be like talking to my husband about it and he's like, well, what can I do for you? What do you need? And I'm just kind of like, uh, I don't know. And then I, I quickly go into that mode of I'm fine. I got this. Don't I'm like, don't worry about me. I've got this. I'm fine. And looking back, I'm like, in all those moments, all I really wanted was just to be heard. I just wanted to vent. Maybe about feeling overwhelmed, feeling a certain way that I couldn't explain. It was just nice to be heard. And that goes back to why these communities are so important because we don't always have those people in our lives that are going to ask us, hey, how are you doing today? How are you feeling about this? We don't always have that. And we don't always feel comfortable expressing ourselves with those people. And so that's partly why we have this community is because I want you guys and any women, any woman, any person that joins our group to feel more comfortable with sharing how they feel, with checking in with yourself and knowing what you need in moments. So really these two steps, I don't even know if I should call them steps because they're not necessarily, you know, one before the other. They kind of work interchangeably and they kind of work more in a circle than a list because you're going to allow yourself time to feel, right? Then you're going to ask yourself what you need in this moment. And then you're going to allow yourself time to heal, which is going to be very kind of similar, but allow yourself that time. And then as you're healing, you're going to ask yourself, what do I need in this moment? Because that's going to change. What you need is going to change. Maybe when you first get really bad news, you just want to be alone. You don't want to be talked to. You don't want to be touched on. You don't want to be bothered. And that's okay. But maybe once you've kind of moved through the first moments of this hard time, you're like, okay, I want to talk to someone. I feel ready. And whether that's a therapist or a friend or a neighbor or someone in this group, you can kind of start tiptoeing into talking to someone. And then maybe from there, you can talk to your partner or your coworker, whatever it is, maybe you need something different, different moments. So it's that constant reminder of checking in and asking yourself what you need. I'm always so amazed. Like when you, you know, if you go to a, a wake or a funeral, let's say it's someone's husband that passed away. It always seems like the, the widow is so quickly taking care of everyone around without stopping and asking how they're doing. So we're so accustomed and so programmed to take care of everyone around us that we think when something happens that we need to be a superwoman. And we need to take care of everyone around us. And yes, it's great to help people, but we have to help ourselves. Because only we can be the best people for others when we're the best for ourselves. And I know we've had a lot of new people join since I started and it's getting kind of to the end of it. But um, I do want to open this up. If anyone has any, anything they would like to share or talk about, feel free. And we can kind of talk through it and then we'll kind of do a little closing and um, yeah, if anyone has to share, no pressure, of course, I can, I can keep talking, um, as well, but let me know. And of course you guys, um, please send me messages I Can send you guys links of where we can connect other places. I share different information, kind of like inspiration and stuff on my personal page, mommy knows best. And then we have our, um, uh, Facebook group as well. Um, so lots of different ways to connect. Um, I'd love to kind of connect with you guys outside of this. All right. Well, if you guys 
do have something to say, feel free to interrupt me or just alert me on here. But I hope these steps kind of um, worked with you guys. I think in hard times, like I was just kind of saying, we forget to check in with ourselves. So this is your reminder that we all cope differently. We're all going to take different times. Because maybe some things are like something quick, you know, that don't take as long maybe to get through. Maybe it's just like, something happened, we have to deal with it. Or other things are going to take a lot longer, like dealing with a death or dealing with hurt from something, or, you know, there's different situations and everyone's going to cope differently. Everyone's going to take longer and don't say because so-and-so got through it quicker, I should be able to get through it quicker. That's there's no, there's no meter to match, right? It's not a competition who can get through something quicker. Like, oh, she had um, postpartum depression and she got through it after a couple months, but I'm a year in and I'm still dealing with it. It's not a competition. You can take whatever time you need, allow yourself to feel and allow yourself to heal really understand what you feel and that you can only do as good of a job of taking care of everyone if you're taking care of yourself. So just remember that, visualize the sleeping under a rug or visualize the empty cup, you know, theory, not theory, but metaphor about the empty cup. You can't pour from an empty cup. So if you're giving to everyone around you, but not giving to yourself, you're going to be left with nothing. And so even if it's just a couple of minutes to really be present with yourself, switching up your routine and doing things to make you ask yourself kind of, what am I feeling? What do I need? And of course we can't forget noticing our progress, right? Sometimes we look ahead and we see the long road in front of us and we're like, oh, it's going to take forever. There's no timeline. Look back more. Look back and see the progress that you've already made and see that you, no matter how big the steps you're taking are, they are steps. Okay. We're going to have days that we're going to feel like we're going backwards and that's okay. It's all progress. So I want to thank you guys for joining me today. Again, I'm Krista from Mommy Knows Best. Send me a message, connect with me. I have a group on here called Mom Talks with Krista. That's also my podcast name, Mom Talks with Krista. It's um, wherever you can listen to podcasts, basically. So send me a message. I'll send you any links. You guys can join me there. And thanks for joining, guys. All right, guys. That was a recent clip from a peanut pot I did called How to Cope When Things Get Tough. And I just thought it was important to share because there's so many different platforms and, you know, domains, areas I'm on and not, they don't usually interact, you know? So a lot of times people that are in the Facebook group, stay in the Facebook group, people on social media, stay in social media and people in the peanut pod stay there. And so I just like to kind of overlap them a little bit, just so you guys can see what the other platforms kind of offer. So if you guys like what you heard this time, I highly recommend you join me on the peanut app. So just download peanut and then you'll see on there, there's a place for pods and to get all the updates for my pods, just join the group mom talks with Krista and I update, you know, all the different pods in there. It's the first and third Thursday of every month. So our next one is August 4th at 1 PM central. So I hope to see you guys in there soon. We also, that same week, we will be having our Facebook room. And that is the one in the Facebook group. It's very similar, but it's all face-to-face. -face. And those, we have different kinds of, of discussions, but it's all, it's all good, awesome discussions and connections that you really, really need. And please, please, please do me a favor. If you got something out of this episode or any of the podcast episodes really please leave a review. It really just helps other people see the show and get more impact from the show. And we have no mom tales this week, but they should be back next week. So be on the lookout for fun questions posted on our social media. 
And that is all I got this week. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. I know it was a little bit different, but let me know what you think. I love hearing from you guys. It helps me put together future shows, future episodes. And yeah, it's just great hearing from you guys. So hope you guys have a great rest of your week and I will see you next week. Bye guys. Thank you so much for watching this episode. Before you go, make sure you like, subscribe, and ring that bell so you get notified of future episodes. We release new episodes every single Wednesday. See you next week.